Now, a different question is that of how is um, knowledge organized inside the human mind? And I just want to highlight two possible models. One is referred to as Collins and Quillian's semantic network model. Now, the idea behind this model is that knowledge is stored as concepts within a hierarchical network of interconnected nodes, uh, which is what you're seeing on the side. So there might be, for example, a mother node, animal, which has two daughter nodes, uh, bird and fish, and bird has two daughter nodes, canary and ostrich, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this network has two important properties. One is that of property inheritance. And the idea is that each node inherits the properties of its mother node. So bird has its own properties. See, it has wings, can fly, has feathers, but also inherits all the properties of animal. So bird also has skin, can move around, eats, breathes, etc. And this leads to the idea of cognitive efficiency. We store concepts only once inside this network, and we store them at the top level. So because anything in animal will have skin, we just put that property at the top, and then it's understood that anything below that also has these, this property. Um, and of course, this setup also gives rise to, um, uh, to obvious predictions. Um, uh, anything, you know, the, the closer you are to a node, the faster um, it should be to verify that, you know, for example, a cannery has a certain property, or it's faster to verify that a cannery is a bird compared to cannery is an animal. Because to verify whether cannery is a bird, you just have to go from here to here. To verify whether cannery is an animal, you have to cross this whole hierarchy until you get up here and verify that it's an animal. Similarly, it should be much faster for you to verify that a cannery is yellow as opposed to a cannery has wings. Because to verify that a cannery is yellow, you have that information in the node cannery right here. It's attached, it's attached to the cannery. But to verify whether a cannery has wings, you have to actually take a step up and find out if that, is, if, if that property is here. In fact, if you had to verify is cannery an animal or does, cannery, uh, does a cannery have skin, you'd have to cross two nodes, which would mean that you have to go further away. And that's exactly what Collins and, William and uh, Quillian did to test their model. And uh, for example, participants had to verify these sentences as quickly as they could. You know, a cannery is a cannery, or a cannery is a bird, or a cannery is an animal. And indeed, as the model predicts, participants were faster at responding to, you know, cannery is a bird compared to cannery is an animal. Again, based on the idea, the closer they are in the network, the faster you would be to verify the property. Because you would mentally go inside this network and sort of track the things. And in order to verify that cannery is a bird, you only have to take one step. Whereas to, uh, to verify cannery is an animal, you'd have to take a couple steps. However, there was data also to the contrary. Rips, Chauvin, and Smith in particular, they showed that actually sometimes, um, Participants are faster at responding to, um, at verifying um, sentences that actually unite things that are further away. For example, it turns out that participants are faster at verifying a dog is an animal compared to verifying a dog is a mammal. Similarly, even though obviously mammal is a um, animal, excuse me, is a supraset of mammal. So according to the, this hierarchical network, animal is further away than mammal from dog. Similarly, participants seem to be faster at verifying robin is a bird versus a chicken is a bird. And yet that's odd because both robin and chicken should be daughter nodes of the node bird. So this model cannot quite account for these typicality effect. And for this reason, Collins and Loftus developed a variant uh, or a different version uh, of the model, which they refer to as the spreading activation model. And the idea is that, again, um, our knowledge might be, rep might be uh, implemented as, as nodes that are connected to each other, but the hierarchy is completely gone. And now the, the nodes that are closer to each other are nodes that are semantically related. 
Well, the idea is that the hierarchy is gone. Nodes are close to each other and proximity to each other in relation to how semantically similar they are. And the idea is that the more semantically similar nodes are, the more connections there will be between the two of them and the shorter the distance between the two of them in the network. Thus, when one node becomes active, activation spreads to all the connected nodes. And of course, the, if, if two concepts are similar, they will activate each other very quickly because they're nearby. Whereas if two concepts are very dissimilar, uh, it'll take a long time for one concept to activate another one that is at the other end of the network. Now, Mayer and Schwanewelt used a lexical decision task where participants had to, as quickly as they could, respond to, uh, to pairs of words. And the idea is that they would present sometimes a pair of words that would be related to each other, and other times a pair of words that would be unrelated. And what they found is that if you present the word butter, participants are faster to respond to it if, they, if it's presented together with the word bread, which makes sense because bread and butter are probably um, connected inside this network. So if you show the word bread, it will start spreading activation. And, and, and the activation of, of the two nodes, bread and butter, will, will join very quickly because in the network, they're because they're semantically similar, they should be nearby each other. And so it should be quick for one to, um, to prime the other. On the other hand, uh, the word nurse is either unrelated or very loosely related to the word bread. So there is no real spreading activation uh, between the two. And see, it's this kind of mechanism that according to that, that, that is sort of the, the feature of this model that allows you to explain things such as typicality effects. So if I were to tell you, you know, tell me all the birds, you know, you would start saying birds that are very typical. Um, and, and, you know, as you go through these typical birds, kind of each, each one activates the next one. And there's this sort of spreading activation effect. Um, and, and that is because I, as I said, concepts that are nearby, um, you know, will spread, uh, the activation will spread quickly uh, and will activate these concepts in your mind. On the other hand, a typical examples will not come to mind right away because they're probably far away from, in this model, from the more typical examples. And so this type of model was conceived to explain why um, we get these type of effects that are not captured by the hierarchical model. And I have to say, overall, although we won't discuss it, um, overall, my take on the neuropsychology literature is that it seems to, as you will read from the book, it seems to capture the idea that knowledge is probably uh, represented and as a broad network um, within the brain.